The Noctagon DM11 is a flashlight that has received a lot of hype and excitement, and for good reason, as there's currently nothing else like it on the market. This light has only just been made available to purchase, and I was lucky enough to actually receive a prototype version of the light from Hank, um, big thanks to him. So let's take a look at it. The DM11 is a compact single emitter thrower in between the K1 and KR1, which runs off a 21700 cell. Instead of a reflector, it uses a large TIR optic, the same 35mm optic as the one used in a few other popular throwers. As a result, this is a pretty compact flashlight, which is very comparable to the D4S V2 in the hand. The DM11 has a really nice form factor, being just long enough to nicely fill the hand, while also being lightweight and easily carryable in a jacket pocket. Underneath the optic are six RGB auxiliary LEDs. These produce a really awesome glow from the front of the light. And this is the only flashlight you can buy right now that has a single large optic and auxiliary LEDs like this, so that's pretty cool. There are several interesting emitter options available for the light, including Osram W1 and W2 emitters, Cree XBL High and XHP35 High, Luminous SST20 and SST40, and soon the SFT40. All of these options will provide impressive throw and high outputs. As nice as all of these are, the most unique and interesting option is the Nietzsche B35AM LED which has an extremely high CRI of 98 in a variety of different temperatures. This LED is essentially a larger version of the E21A and can produce well over 1500 lumens on turbo, with an intensity of about 48,000 candela under the large optic. This is a really impressive combination of specs, and while it lacks the crazy throw of some of the other options, I definitely think this is the most compelling emitter choice. This light here is actually pretty unique, and is not exactly the same as the one that is now available for purchase. This one has a B35AM at 5000K and a wide-angle optic that provides a floodier beam pattern. It's actually different from the light being sold now, in which the optic has been modified to literally double the intensity. I measured an intensity of just under 25,000 candela in this light, which hardly makes it a thrower. However, this just so happens to align more with my own preferences, and I find this to be an extremely nice beam pattern that provides a fairly wide hotspot, with a strong spill that gradually fades outward. It still has plenty of throw for my uses, and is impressively bright at over 1600 lumens at startup, which shows this emitter is being driven right in its sweet spot for performance. Better yet, this 5000K emitter produces a super clean white beam that is just fantastic for general outdoor usage. Tint is very neutral, with just a hint of greenness in the outer spill. I honestly suspect that might be partly due to the green color of this host. The DM11 has three different driver options, which will depend on the emitter chosen. Most versions of the light will have a constant current 3 volt driver, which will be regulated to either 5 amps or 7.5 amps depending on the LED. The B35AM uses a 6 volt boost driver, which maxes out at 3.6 amps, and the XHP35 High uses a 12 volt driver at 2 amps. Being a single emitter light, the DM11 does not get super hot, but will still generate a fair bit of heat on turbo. On this B35 model, the high output is sustained for a respectable amount of time, and overall the run times and stable output are really pretty solid with about 2 hours of runtime at a sustained 500 lumens. For a light with 98 CRI, this is very nice. The light was calibrated, but I did not adjust the thermal limit, so I'm sure even higher outputs can be sustained. That will require more testing. There are a couple of interesting quirks with this design. The knurling on the body tube is very aggressive and has been polarizing online. I find it to be a bit more than I would like, but it's really great for holding with gloves and is another factor that points towards this being an excellent outdoor flashlight. However, while the knurling is fine, I do find that the fins on the head are a bit too sharp, which is actually more annoying in the hand than the knurling is. It also seems to me the head could have used more heatsink fins. Thermal performance is fine, but it's just a lot of flat surface here that I think could probably have been utilized better. It's already not a smooth light in the hand, so you might as well just go for more fins here. Oddly, the head diameter is very close to the D4S, and yet the body tubes are not interchangeable. This really is a missed opportunity, as having compatible tubes between the two would have opened the door to using either cell type with either light, which would have been super nice. In addition, the DM11 lacks the USB-C charging port found on the K1 and K9.3. I'm not a fan of ports and threads anyway, but it would have been a nice feature nonetheless, so it's a bit of a shame it's gone here. The DM11 has its own totally unique pocket clip, which I'm really not a fan of. To be clear, I don't think this light needs a clip in the first place, and this one is actually quite nice in that it doesn't really alter the ergonomics of the light in the hand. However, it's very difficult to get into the pocket, which kind of makes it useless anyways. 
it's also black which is a little weird but whatever <laughs> in this exact configuration this light competes very directly with the d4s v2 and practically speaking it could probably be swapped out for my 219b d4s and have the same functionality however i prefer this one just a bit more as it is slightly throwier gets a bit less hot and has an even higher cri which is pretty nice this individual light though is again an exception, and in general the DM11 is going to be significantly throwier than the D4S V2, so they won't really be that comparable. Overall, I really think this is an excellent light, and I think it's one that a lot of people will enjoy. It's very practical for outdoor use and has pretty solid performance. This is not a full review of this light, I'll have to do some more testing before making a final verdict. But at the moment, I'm really happy with this light, and I'm happy to recommend it, as it's one I really enjoy using myself. I'll be getting another of these with a different emitter, so I can compare the two and really test this light as a proper thrower, but I can say that this particular floodier light is kind of one that fills my needs very nicely, and it's honestly one of my favorites so far. I really do hope that it will be available with this floodier optic, just because I think it's a super nice option to have. Uh, it does have some interesting quirks, but it's very much in line with the other MSR lights I have. And I think it makes for an excellent companion light to the D4S V2 or even the smaller quads. That's all there was for this video. It's a bit less of a fancier one. Um, again, I'm going to be doing a longer full review of this as well as the D4S V2. It's just going to take a lot more time. I have a lot of tests to do and some fancy footage and all that fun stuff, I guess. So <laughs> this video is, is not quite as fancy, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was a little helpful at least. Again, I want to thank Hank for sending this along. It's super cool of him to do that. And I... I really am enjoying this light. It's honestly super cool. So, and again, I'm not getting paid to do these videos or anything. It's just fun and Hank likes them. So <laughs> he sent the light. So that's, that's kind of fun, I guess. Go ahead and blow all of your money on the DM11 if you haven't already and pick up a couple of the new tint ramping lights too while you're at it. Uh, highly recommended. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Adios.